<clears throat> Welcome back to Secrets of Field Bodybuilding Podcast. You got Sean Hypes and Ryan Palmberg. So uh, last time we were on, which is maybe like three or four weeks ago, we went over um, we went over your diet and then went over your physique and then talked about all these strengths and weaknesses and kind of uh, developed a plan on how we would build or how we would train to build up the weaknesses on your physique, right? Yep. So today we are going to go over mine. Um, so I'm still just in the middle of the off season. Uh, right now, current weight was 237.2 on Friday. So we'll just go over my diet first. Um, <clears throat> Sean, I don't think I said this to you, but it's pretty much the same. It's very close to what I sent you a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, fact, um, I'll pull that one up because I know you said there was like one to two changes, but I'll pull that one up. You sent me last. Yep. Yeah, virtually the same thing. So like I said, 237.2 is body weight. I'm still doing six meals. And food is, I would consider it uh, pretty moderate right now. I'm not pushing anything crazy hard. Um, just for kind of like background, I've traditionally, I've always pushed really hard in the off season with food and I've gotten uh, a little heavier than I needed. Like last year, I got up to 265 and competed at 207. And I was still conditioning wise, I was still off a little bit, but it just got to the point where I already dropped 53 pounds and my body was just having a really hard time pushing any further to drop any more weight. So the goal this year was to just keep it a little bit tighter uh, so I don't have to drop as much weight coming down well, the next time I want to compete. Um, it just ends up being too much on the body to continually push into that deficit. Between that and it's, it's uh, one thing I've always told people is don't force the body to do something it doesn't want to do. Right, yeah. Um, and typically when people tend to get anywhere between 30 to 40 pounds above their stage weight, anything past that, you're going to start having a lot of loose skin. The skin won't tighten up. Yeah. You know, and, you know, and then kind of a inside joke that, but I got to say this to Ryan is, you know, when you drive that food up, you typically get edema in the legs. So. Oh, holy shit, dude. That was so, so yeah, we won't say who it was, but a well-named coach, well-known coach, big name, uh, Very. Posted, uh, one of his male clients and <laughs> his foot. That's what I said it to you, man. Cause I, at first I was like, does this dude even have any toes? And I, <laughs> I zoomed in and his foot was just blown up. I just, I love, I love that comment. Um, yeah, his right foot tends to get water when we push, push food. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's the food you push. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And then he posts, you saw that he posted them again the other day and he cut the feet out. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, it, 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 but then he posted another picture. It was a female and, and it's, it's like, dude, it's, it, if you're going to post pictures of your clients, which I'm not a fan of doing, there's certain things you might want to ask them before you post or hide of, hide of it. I mean, well, you would think listen, she first of all she sent that picture to him oh she did oh well she had to have how else did he get it unless he's taking pictures of his clients like that well, why, why is he posting it though like that would be me i was like, like it, okay there's some pictures I, i've had females send me that i'm just like okay you know fine it's fine with me it doesn't bother me but i'm not posting a picture yeah. of my girl in a in a thong no you know it doesn't bother me but it's not getting posted but a picture like that where i'm seeing something else where i'm questioning if it's a man or a woman i'm like um why did you post that dude <laughs> like yeah, that was that was a uh, that was a little risque photo for sure. Um, all right, so back to the diet. Um, very simple. I'm not pushing any kind of high carbs right now, uh, so we'll just go through it here. Meal one, I'm doing seven egg whites. Uh, oh crap, this has just changed. Okay, easy. Anyways, uh, meal one, seven egg whites and god damn it, eight egg whites now, two whole eggs. Um, so yeah, pretty simple for that, for the eggs, and then 65 grams of carbs from oats. Uh, just because it's off season, I'm doing, um, I'm doing two, two Quaker packs, low sugar, and then uh, ends up being a quarter scoop of plain oats with it as well. So breakfast is pretty simple. Um, meal you two, my- you have a food line up there? What's that? You have a food line up there, grocery store? No, food lines, that's all Southern. Dude, they got a food line has their own brand of cinnamon. It's cinnamon roll oatmeal. Oh, dude. A buddy of mine told me about it at, at work, actually. Man, I got it. If I get a chance, I'll pick up a couple and send it to you. That shit's that's good. Yep. It's the best oatmeal I've had. My my usual go-to is I always uh I get the mix, the variety pack of low sugar. And I like to mix like the I always I like as many apple cinnamon, like apple cinnamon and the maple or the apple cinnamon and the cinnamon and spice. Yeah. But yeah. Delicious, delicious. Um, meal two is seven ounces, seven and a half ounces of chicken. Uh, and this number might sound kind of strange, 
but it'll make sense. Uh, 47 and a half grams of carbs from rice and I do a half banana with it and then um, half a cup of uh, mixed veggies. So it's just really, I'm just trying to get to 65 grams of carbs for that meal. Yeah. So that's why it's 47 and a half grams. It's just, you know, I'm eyeballing that, but. Did you get rid of the avocado oil out of that meal? Oh, uh, yes, I did. Okay. I'm reading an old diet. I'm reading last week's diet. We made changes on, um, on yeah, Friday. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I, I, I took the avocado oil out. I took it out now. So it's just, it's just the, um, the protein, the carbs and the veggies there. Okay. Uh, meal three, again, seven and a half ounces of 90% um, lean beef. 47 grams of carbs, another half banana. So across the board, all my protein sources are seven and a half ounces when I'm having meat. Uh, Pre-workout meal is two scoops of whey isolate and 65 grams of carbs from cream of rice and a tablespoon of peanut butter. So I eat this meal about an hour and a half out. Um, I <clears throat> typically for most of my clients too, I'll have them on something very similar to this, but like a, a whey isolate, uh, very easily digestible, carb source, like the cream of rice, maybe some oats, and then a tablespoon of peanut butter. So I like, I personally like easily digestible foods prior to the workout, because I don't want anything sitting in my stomach feeling heavy, um, getting that nauseous feeling, or even just having that big bloated stomach when you're working out. Um, I, I eat this about an hour and a half before, and by the time I'm working out, my stomach's back to being flat again. Uh, I do a small amount of fat, which is this one tablespoon of peanut butter, which ends up being about seven grams of fat. And that's just to keep the blood sugars stable throughout the entire workout. So there's no uh, peaks and valleys of energy throughout that. And that, that's one thing being that you brought up cream of rice too. That's something everyone should realize if you're having carbs and you're bloating, switch to cream of rice. That stuff, yes. it doesn't bloat. Like, I'm sure it does to some people, but I've never seen someone bloat. Um, that's actually something I switch a lot of my females to getting closer to a show with their carbs. Yep. Is cream of rice. It's, it's, if you look at the macro, there's, it's nothing but literally carbs in there. Yeah, like I'll tell you this forms. a funny story. When I was cooking it one time, it doesn't tell you how to microwave it on the box. It just tells you how to cook it on the stove. You get the water, do a rolling boil, you put all the stuff in and you stir. So I was like, all right, I was in my apartment. And so I get the water to a rolling boil. I go put all that stuff in and it just starts splashing everywhere like lava, right? So my, my wife, Katie, was right beside me. And I like ran backwards and like got behind her and I took the wooden spoon and like chucked it at the stove. <laughs> was like a spider or something? It was just flying everywhere. It got on my arms. It was like lava. I was like, what the fuck is this? So ever since then, I tell everyone, I'm like, look, <clears throat> don't follow the directions. Just cook you a big ass batch in the microwave, put it in the fridge. Yeah. Be good. yeah. I couldn't figure out how to cook it for the longest time. Um, Cause I try everyone like raved about cream of rice. And so I tried it one day and I tried it like on two separate occasions before <clears throat> this previous year and I would cook it. But if you, if you cook it in the microwave and then let it sit, it gets like super hard and you got to like, See, yeah, I actually was like grading it to break yeah, it up. I, I'm, a, I'm a weird texture person when it comes to foods. I actually kind of like that. That's oh, just like, like that? yeah, that's actually like my food during the day. I don't yeah. microwave it. Like if it's cooked fresh, yeah, I'll eat it. But like my food I bring to work, I don't microwave it. I like it cold. Yeah. Weird. Sometimes I like, sometimes I like the chicken cold. Like, like deep in the off season, if you're pushing food really hard, sometimes like cold chicken is better than hot. Yeah. And like a hot meal, it just, the hot meal just feels like it fills you up more for some reason. Yeah, this is something don't quote me on. I'm going to research it and I'll, I'll get back at this and bring this up because this is kind of a big thing with food is I do remember reading something and hearing a big time coach talk about this, that uh, eating food cold actually raises the glycemic index of it. Oh, um, so got it. I mean, that's how you burn a calorie, right? Is you, you literally yeah. put it in an oven and burn it. So Basically. it's going to make your body work harder to burn it. To, yep. Yeah, burn it off. It specifically stated that it raises the glycemic index of it. So I was like, hmm. But I'm going to research that more before I don't quote me on it, but I believe that's okay. what it was, what the guy was talking about. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, so it's my pre workout meal. Uh, intra, <clears throat> intra workout, I do one scoop of VAAs. It's like seven or 10 grams there. And then I do 50. So on my leg, chest, and back days, I'll take 50 grams of a highly cyclic, dec highly cyclic dextrin carb source. And then on my arms and shoulder days, just because they're a much smaller muscle group, I'll do 25. Uh, it also helps with the bloating. Mm -hmm. I just notice on like my arm and shoulder days, if I take it, um, I'm just not doing enough activity to really digest all that fast enough. And it's a, typically a shorter workout too. So I just notice my bloating is a lot more on those days. 
Now, when you're doing your intro, this is something I wanted to ask you. Um, when do you start sipping it? Like, do you sip it at the, from the beginning to end, or do you start about midway through to sip it? How do you do it? I typically start it uh, maybe like five minutes before I get to the gym. I'll have like, you know, three to four sips before I get to the gym. Uh, and then I try, I don't always succeed, but I try to have it done by like the third to fourth exercise if I'm doing like yeah. five. I've, I've heard some people say that like I'm with you it's like right when I get to the gym I'll take sips and like basically when I'm almost halfway done it should be gone yeah um but I've had some people tell me that they like doing it about halfway through their workout they'll do it hmm. uh, I guess you could kind of depend on what you want like to them I guess that would be more for recovery because it's on the back end of your workout yeah but the way that you and I have said to do it from the beginning it's more to fuel your workout get the, get those carbohydrates yeah the uh, glycogen into those muscles during the workout yep yep um yeah it's just the it, it, that's exactly it uh well i guess what happens and i'm not a scientist by any means at all but um if you listen to john meadows or uh dr serrano all those people on over the mountain dog channel um while you work out you have so we know insulin is a transport hormone um insulin is you know responsible for transferring a lot of the glycogen to the muscles uh while you work out your digestive tract isn't really firing that much because the blood's being diverted to the muscles and so while you while you're working out uh what's called the glute 4 receptors kind of come to the surface of the muscles and as glycogen's passing by it it's going to that glute 4 receptor is going to be that that entryway for the, the glycogen to enter the muscle without without the use of insulin so it's just a way to the digestive system what's that it actually never even reaches deep into the digestive system though. right yep yep just in the circular circular system still okay. So yeah, it's kind of like a side door, side door to it while you're working out. Um, yeah, so do like I said, I do 50 grams during my uh, chest, legs, and back, and then 25 grams during my arm and shoulder days. Again, just small muscle groups. I don't feel like I need as much um, <clears throat> post workout. So because I take the intra carbs and the EAAs, I don't feel a need to need to take my post workout meal immediately after the gym. So now I kind of, I drive home, which is, you know, 10, 10 minutes to get home, hop in the shower, shower, get out. And then I have uh, two scoops of protein again. And I'm doing right now, I'm just doing a, um, a bagel with some, with some light jelly on there to equal about 65 grams of carbs again. <clears throat> so <clears throat> uh, post-workout is really, you know, kind of the only window where you can get away with eating kind of whatever you want. Um, I enjoy bagels, it's easy. Some people will do a lot of cereal lately. That's the biggest kick. I'm not a really big fan of, of doing that, but yeah, that's, I, I see a lot of people doing cereal, man. It's just whatever. See for me, man, I'm not, I'm not a sweet tooth person. Yeah. Like me, I'm more of just like savory or something. So like candy, anything like that. I'm just, and I tell like a lot of my, my, my clients that they're like, oh man, I'm just craving this sweet, this, that, this, that. I'm like, that sucks. I was like, yeah. I don't crave, I don't crave sweets. I just don't like them. Even as a kid, I was the kid that like, I'd go to my grandmother's German has chocolate all over the fucking place. I'd go to the fridge and I'd grab like a VA juice or something. <laughs> that was just. Me. Now I don't got a crazy big sweet tooth. I, I told you we do. Uh, we do enjoy our ice cream on Saturdays, though. Yeah. Was good to the ice cream, yeah, for sure. Um, mint chocolate chip, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so yeah. Notice I don't have any. I don't have any fats in my post workout meal. Um, and I think I think I called you up and talked to you about this. Jansen posted on his channel, so. Historically, people don't, we don't put fats in our post-workout meal because we've always had the mindset of wanting to uh, replenish our glycogen stores as fast as possible. Um, however, I did see a contradictive statement on uh, Matt Jansen posted one of his little Q and A's on, like, you're on your story. Mm. I forget what the question was, but he argued the fact that he doesn't think that you need to immediately replenish your glycogen stores after you work out, which I guess makes sense. There's no there's no, you don't need to have your glycogen stores refilled immediately because you already done your workout. You're not gonna be taxing your muscles again soon. Um, so he's under the impression that you can just, you know, continue to fill them with your regular meals throughout the day. So he actually has some fats in his post-workout meal. Um, I don't think either way is wrong. Um, right. So, you, you that, know, you way. Way. Um, like, you know, you like your post-workout, you kind of want it to be pretty quick into your system. Yeah. So if you have higher fats in there, it's gonna slow down digestion. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time too, you know, a lot of people know that thought of your carbohydrates from the morning are going to fuel your workout later in the day, pre-workout carbs. That's not always true. It depends on the carbohydrate. It, 
typically it's the carbs you eat today will fuel tomorrow. Right. So Can yes, yes and no. The carbs you eat today will fuel your workout tomorrow, meaning that's what's going to be stored as glycogen in your muscles. Right. The carbs you eat pre-workout is what keeps your blood sugars. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean as far as it depends on the type. So in the theory of Jansen, what he said is the carbs that you eat today they're not immediately restoring what just burnt off from your workout. Those yeah. are going to be there tomorrow. And that, so in theory, he is correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But it's just some people just, they, they get in that train of thought of I'm getting small, got to have the food, blah, blah, blah. Yep. It, you got to know your body, learn your body. Same with your coach has to learn your body. What's going to work best. Some people need it. Some people don't. Yep. Exactly. Uh, so meal six, last meal of the day, again, seven and a half ounces of chicken. 65 grams of carbs from rice, and then I do an ounce of almond or um, a tablespoon of uh, avocado oil. So my uh, the only difference, that's a training day for me. The only difference is on my um, non-training days is I have uh, 40 grams less of carbs. So I take I take 20 grams of carbs away from meal two and meal five. Okay, is there any reason you take them away from that meal or is it just convenient for you? No, just convenience. I take it away from, so I still have my, my whole food meals are all the same. And then I still have a, a meal. Instead of the bagel, I changed to cream of rice. So I have two meals of cream of rice. So I'm just doing 45 grams there. I'm going to start getting back into cream of rice. I, 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 I used to love that stuff. It's good. It's easy. I used to put a little bit of pepper on it. Um, it's, it's funny, man. Like cream of rice is delicious in prep. And then it starts losing its flavor a little bit when you come out. Everything yeah. tastes good. And everything tastes good during prep. And I, I tell the clients all the time, like I used to make these like egg roll, uh, or not egg roll, uh, egg white tortillas. Yeah. Egg whites. <clears throat> make three or four, however, make my ounce egg from egg whites were. And I would literally put broccoli in them and oatmeal and hot sauce and roll it up like a taco. Nice. Or a burrito. So I, I'm eating egg whites, oatmeal, hot sauce, and, a, and broccoli all at once. Yeah. And prep, amazing. Outside of prep, disgusting. Dude. Some things you like during prep are absolutely nasty <laughs> in the off season. Your mind's just, your mind's just crazy during prep. So you eat whatever. Um, all right, cool. So let's go over uh, my pictures. Let me see if you can, let me figure out how to do this again because it's been a couple of weeks since we did it. I figure out how to share my, let me share my screen. How the hell do you do this? Wish we had someone here to, I literally forgot how to do this. So give me a second. <laughs> I'm horrible with technology. <clears throat> you have to, uh, like, Google this real quick. <laughs> I know it can't be hard, man, because I just did it. I just did it the other week. Call oh, share screen. Here we go. Easy. Whiteboard, iPad. I guess we'll share desktop. Close out of this. Let me see. Can you see? Uh... Yep. You can see this? Yes, front relaxed. All right, cool. So yeah, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over these. These shots are actually from like three weeks ago when we were originally gonna do this. Um, obviously, not much as I haven't gained thirty pounds from here. I'm actually pretty close to the exact same weight. I think I was actually like 0.4 heavier here. But uh, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go over uh, all my poses and we're gonna point out uh, strengths and weaknesses, and then we're gonna discuss how to train to help enhance the weaknesses that we want to bring up. So. I'm gonna kind of take the back seat on this, um, mainly because I just think I suck all around. So I'll let I'll let Sean kind of be the the tour guide of of my uh, my mediocre physique here. So just to kind of uh, get it out in the open, right now in these photos, I think I was two thirty seven point six. Um, I competed last year at two hundred seven. I was probably maybe five eight pounds still um, over what I wanted, what I should have been. So. Arguably could be a light heavyweight uh, or a small heavyweight. So, Sean, go ahead and uh, let's kick Your it off. So everybody knows. What's that? Your height. <clears throat> Your height. Oh, 5'8". Five, 5'8". Eight. Five, eight. As far as with the front relaxed, you know, of course it's off season. So, you know, people can sit there and attack a waist, but it's off season. That's nothing to even talk about. So, yeah, let me get that out in the open too. Um, I definitely have a, a strong tendency to my, all my, most of my fat is going to go right to my waist. So you'll see in this front and the back shots, my waist gets blown out. So when I diet down my waist, I lose like right now, my waist is like 36, 37. When I compete, it's about 20, it's about 30, 30 inches. So it's, it's a drastic visual difference, which throws a lot of it off in the off season. Yeah. 
Um, I, honestly, this is a great pose for you. I think it honestly always has been, even back when I trained you and everything, this has always been a strong pose for you. Um, mostly, honestly, because like we've talked before, you know, having shorter clavicles, we, we have a, not the greatest things to do with certain poses, but we find ways to work around it. And in this pose, I think that really does help you, you know, with the clavicles, because your your it brings your shoulders up more, which yeah. brings out this pose. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, and, and of course there's imbalances, but that's in every single person, a quad, a little bit bigger arm. So stuff like that's not even worth pointing out. Um, so yeah, I've always, I always thought personally, I always thought the front relax were my worst poses, um, mainly because of the narrow clavicles we have, or I have. So, mm -hmm. um, a big focus of mine the last couple of years has been just bringing up my side delts as much as possible. And when you, I, I guess it's not even just your side delts. The front delts and even the rear delts play a role in in this shot alone too. Um, all three of those heads kind of give it a 3D look. Uh, if you didn't have any front delts, the shot would still make you look pretty slight. But um, and honestly, it's also the rear delts too. Like I've I've explained to people that you know how how important your lats are to your bench press. Yeah, it's the same with your rear delts to, for the for the appearance in the front of your body. Your rear delts play a huge role because of the posture. Yeah. Bigger rear delts, everything's going to spread more and roll forward, and that's yeah. what happens. Like you you can clearly see your side delt, which is what you want from this pose. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So uh, any weaknesses in the shot? Um, a little bit into the chest, you know, which we, which I don't think in this pose is sticking out too much. Mm -hmm. um, because you do have a, you do have a, a wide rib cage or I wouldn't say wide, more a broad out rib cage. So this pose actually to me is good for you. It's just bringing in that midsection, which of course, like we said, it's off season. Yeah. And this is a very strong pose for you. Cool. <clears throat> um. Yeah, surprisingly, this is the first. I haven't looked at this. I don't really typically look at my shots that much anymore. That too crazy hard because it just drives me crazy. Um, but looking at this, I'm actually not angry about it at the moment. Uh, the only thing I would say from looking at this is adductors a little bit, quad sweep a little bit, but that's just getting picky. Uh, I think so. When I look at my physique, um, I don't think I have any glaring strengths and I don't have any glaring weaknesses. Um, I think my biggest strength is just sy symmetry. And I don't mean like symmetry, like, a, um, I, f I flow well, I'm, ba I'm balanced everywhere. I, guess, yeah, I, don't say. I don't have any, um, like I said, I don't have any crazy weaknesses. I don't have any crazy strengths, but everything, everything fits and balances and flows together with, with itself. Yeah. Well, cool. So front double. Solid pose, um, coarse arms, which we've always talked about. We both had that issue. Um, that, that's probably the main thing in this that sticks out is the arms. Um, yeah. like once again, you know, the midsection, but off season, yeah. um, cause I even said beforehand that that's where you, that's where you hold everything's always in your midsection. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, quad development is very good on this. You can actually see, you know, your adductor on this pose, I don't know if it's cause more you're turned out a little bit on your left leg, but your adductor seems to be more apparent on this one. Yeah. So I guess if you're looking at the picture of the tattoo, is the right side, and obviously you can see my wedding ring on the left hand side there. Um, so my left leg, you know, everyone everyone has imbalances at some point, but like my left leg is a, is a, a tad undersized compared to my right. So um, in order to create a better illusion, I kick that left leg out a little bit, and then I shift my body to the right. Um, and so what that does is it ends up pulling out that adductor on that left leg a little more, and just giving that that leg a little more girth overall. Yeah. Basically, you did properly what I was screwing around with last time when I moved my leg way too back, and it was like all screwed up. Yeah. But I, like I said, I was messing around. That, but that's how to properly do. It's just a slight offset is all you need. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. When I look at this, the biggest thing I see is is my arms, and believe it or not, my right arm, which actually looks small in this photo, is a little bigger. Um, but I look at that. I don't know what it is. That right bicep just it always looks like atrophied to me when I look at it. It looks horrible. Just yeah. that little gap right there. Yeah, I know what um, you mean. Yeah, the one th the one thing I hate, man, it's no secret, is uh, I really struggle with arm days. For the longest time, I struggled with uh, even like connecting with them. Uh, for a few years, I felt like I couldn't even like get a pump in my biceps. Um, what I did to change that is, so actually, when I curl, which kind of goes against science in a sense, um, when you think about like. We think about like a double jointed muscle. So like the biceps is a double jointed muscle because it crosses over the elbow and it also crosses at the shoulder. Um, in order to get like a full contraction on that, 
you want to put one end on stretch, which in this case would be stretching the shoulder back to be able to get the tightest contraction. Um, it doesn't really work well for me. So I actually have to bring my, I bring my elbow slightly forward of my lat when I curl and it just allows me to get like a better contraction towards the, the center of the, the top of the range of motion. Um, it's odd because but, I know most people succeed pretty well with more of like a drag curl with the elbow back. Yeah. I don't really feel the connection with it. I, I don't, man. I really don't. Um, I, I, I really struggle with arm days. And I think it's, it's probably gotten to the point where it's more of a mental thing. Um, yeah. yeah, I just, the one thing I wanted when I started bodybuilding was I wanted big arms. And the one thing I don't have <laughs> is big arms. <laughs> Well, it's also because we care about legs and back and chest. You know, I couldn't tell you how many times I see people in the gym. It's Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. All I see is preacher curls and tricep extensions. Yeah. yeah arms look good, but your damn legs look like your damn <laughs> forearms. Come on. Exactly. So, uh, yeah, the, just the biggest thing I see here is arms. Um, if anybody has any great tips for arms, uh, share them, please, because I will try anything at this point. <laughs> That's arms is the only thing I don't, I don't like give expert advice on because it's just yeah I just struggle with it triceps I actually I actually can get a really good connection with my triceps the biggest issue I have with my triceps is that I get um I'm really prone to like elbow tendonitis yeah um at the, the top there's so, like I, I I always stay away from skull crushers because those will those will ruin my elbows real quick um you know, is I wonder if you had the same issue as me is when you were younger that was the main exercise and go heavy as hell and then yeah the age which you and me were bitching to each other the other day about age yeah, I can't do them now. Like it's not even the pain. It's like I physically can't get in that that position to do them properly. Oh, really? Yeah, but with a barbell now with dumbbell skull crushers, great. I, I don't know heavy, huh? Even with the easy curl bar? Yeah, I can't get in the position right with it. Okay. Yeah, I, I, my elbows. It's not nothing with size. It's just I, I physically just get stuck. I can't move them. Like I don't know if it's impingements or what. I just can't get in that position. Yeah, it's a, it's a, obviously a mobility issue with um, some. Uh, what is that? That's, that's internal rotation. So you have some internal rotation issues. Yeah. Um, yeah. So any other weaknesses in this shot? No, actually this is str another strong shot from the front, you know, and these are the things that we talked about is from the front, your, your shots are very strong. Yep. Cool. I know you got a, I know you got a comment on this shot. So I want to uh, point out, this is my left side again. You see this little divot right here. When I, when I die it down, that divot is a lot more prominent. Um, I thought it was an old pec tear. Uh, I thought it was like a partial tear that I got like a few years ago. So I actually had an MRI this year. And um, remember I showed you, I think I sent you the picture of me uh, dyed it down. And it's a pretty, I have that hole on both sides, but this on the left side, it looks a lot bigger. Yeah. Um, I got an MRI, the doctor called me and so there is no pec tear whatsoever. Uh, what it is, is that there was some kind of strain there at some point and it cut off some uh, like vascularity. And so now, fat doesn't grow in that area as much strange but hmm. that's what that is so yeah go ahead and uh pick this shot apart what do you have uh d definitely on this one chest um i think on this one too it, it, there's a, a difference like you're doing the pose properly but i think the camera's a touch too high so it's like it's thrown off a little bit um for the illusion because mm -hmm. your your lats i know what they look like from the proper angle same with the shoulders but like we talked about um, when we talked about this photo actually was it's more your outer pec needs to be filled out on this. Yeah, I agree. And that's, that's, that's a major weakness in this pose because yes, it's not a chest pose, but a big chest in this brings out a lot in the pose. Absolutely. I agree. Um, I do see a little imbalance on your, from left to right on that. Is that just from just how you're standing or just in the moment of the picture? Or how did that work out in that? For the chest? Well, the chest ain't like the shoulders, like you, you look a little leaned a little bit. I think so. I'm doing, I'm doing the same thing I do in the front double where I shift to the side, okay. shift to the right. Um, it looks, it, just look at the photo. It looks like I'm maybe leaning back further than I should be. Like I'm, I might be like arched back a little too far. That's just the camera's high up. Maybe that too. Um, That's one thing when I, when my people get real close to a show, I tell them put the phone on the ground because I, I want the judge's angle when they're looking up. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but no, my, my left pec is bigger than my right. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm just going to keep pointing the same thing out. Actually, surprisingly, my shoulders look like they've come up. Uh, cause I'm usually that shot's a little flatter on my shoulders. So I'm actually kind of impressed with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and again, I'm just going to keep pointing them out, but, uh, 
add arches and quads could just be a little bigger. All I wonder, have you ever uh, played around with your hand placements on this pose, like bring them a little bit lower just to see what it would look like? Yeah, uh, it, it elongates. It doesn't, <clears throat> when, yeah, I, I have. Um, I like this, this placement the best. Um, it makes my arms look a little longer and makes my lats look a little shallower. Okay. I lower them. And I guess this would be a good point too to, to bring up when it comes to posing, how you pose in off season changes in the in during prep. Yep. So, you know, like like at this point is when I would say if, if I was, you know, instructing him on posing, I would tell him bring his arms down. And right now, maybe his arms down might make this pose look better. Yeah. But come contest time, it would probably look worse and he needs to bring those arms back up. Yeah, I don't I don't change my posing off from off season to on season. I yeah. just um, I keep it the exact same. So when I'm when I'm getting ready for a show, it's it's nailed every time, you know. I still see, I, I've gone and said, um, I do see Kenny Wallach every year, who he's is like the closing guru up here in the Northeast. So he's, he's yeah, good. amazing at what he does. Yeah, absolutely. Side shots. What do you see here? Side chest. Um, I'd like to see a little bit more glute development, but then again, that tie in could be hard to see during the off season. Mm -hmm. um, I love the stance, actually. That, that stance works real good with you. Um, I'd, and once again, it's the outer pec. Um, yeah. I'd like to there's see. No, like, there's no like definitive line there. Kind of just like falls into, you know, just like kind of falls in. Yeah. Um, I'd like to see a little bit into that. Um, one question I wanted to ask you on this too is, is, do you prefer your hand placement on your left arm to be up like that instead of turned out supinated or? You just yeah. So if, yeah. Uh, if you look at my hand, you'll see it's, an, I do a neutral grip with my side chest. Uh, I don't have good arms to begin with. And when I do the neutral grip, it kind of just elongates the bicep a little bit, obviously. Um, so if, if I supinate it, that bicep kind of just, it just tightens up a little more and looks a little shorter. Uh, so I've, I've always done the neutral grip just to kind of fill that gap in a little bit more. Yeah. Um, and a little bit on the front delt, but I think the front delt, th this difference on this one is because of the chest too. Cause like you said, they kind of mold in together right there. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it, it, like I said, lower body, that's a very strong pose for you. Um, yeah, I, I like this pose a lot. So yeah, I, I completely agree on the glutes. Uh, this side, um, I know I said earlier, I, I have, I'm pretty, have pretty good symmetry. Um, but side to side, I have some disparities that you won't ever see because it's a, you know, it's a side shot, but like my, so I know it's strange. My left pec is bigger than my right pec, but my hamstring on this side looks much better than the hamstring on the other side but the right glue is bigger than this glue. <laughs> but uh, just looking at it from a shot basis, from a pose basis, this side is much better for a side chest for me. Yeah, because um, like, legs, legs bring out winners. It's, it's more powerful. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I see um, glutes definitely need to come up on this side for sure. Uh, and the front delt does look a little flat. I'll admit that, um, which I think kind of, so front delt could also be enhanced with some more pec development too, because that, that pec inserts um, below that front delt up on the humerus. Uh, but I could also just probably hammer front delts a little more. And I will admit uh, in my training, I do neglect front delts more than sides and rears lately. I got, for a while, my front delts were a little more overpowered than my sides and, and rears. And so I you know, switched gears and um, it's obviously shifted the, uh, what's a week? Yeah, I'll tell you, man, I, I remember uh, I went to, I forgot what year it was. It was the year Keem Williams turned pro. At yep. North America. and um, I was sitting in the fan, the aisle just waiting for people, and Akeem Williams walked right by me in a tank top. His front delts are huge, like they were almost choking him. They were that high up. Yeah, man, those front delts, man. He is a freak, bro. Yeah, like I, I just wonder. Like, he's he's finally nailing his condition. Who's he with now? Oscar. Oscar he's, yeah. he's with Oscar. He's yeah. finally getting that conditioning down. And if his lats were just oh, lower, man, I heard something. I'll have to tell you off camera. I heard, I heard, uh, he left Oscar for someone else. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's not. I don't. I don't think they made it public yet. So, okay. yeah, I'll tell you. I'll tell you off camera. Um, which yeah. overall strong pose, but just like we said, the pack in the front delt development needs to be brought up on this one. Yep. Agreed. Agreed. Um, I just want to real quick just kind of backtrack on the Akeem thing. If he did leave Oscar, it it blows my mind because he's con consistently gotten better and better each year and he just placed sixth and a bunch of people were arguing that he should have been he should have been um compared to the top three or you know what i mean 
you've been the top three mix. Why would you leave if you're nailing it every show and you just placed top six, which is the highest you've ever placed by far? Why would you leave? Good question. I, I've had someone I turned pro left me. I had someone that did a national level show, got, I think, sixth, did one under me, got second, left me. I'm like, I mean, yeah, is what it is. Yeah. It blows my mind, man. Uh, back to a bicep. So, yeah, you see here, off season, that's this is where all most of my fat goes for sure. Yeah. Um, I always like to start at the bottom. Um, calves could be a little bit bigger, but you know, that's more of a genetic thing, how it happens. I, I know you nail calves. There's no question on that. Yep. Um, I know you have hamstrings. So it's just like we said, off season, a lot, a lot of it's being hidden. Um, once again, here, glute development and tie into the waist. Yep. Um, your back does have good development into it. I'd like to see a touch more into the lower lats. Okay. Um, and then of course, biceps on this, um, but overall good pose rear delts look good. I, I love when I can see the front delt on this pose and I can see your front delt. Yeah. Um, and the quad sweep, once again, the quad sweep should be seen from the rear. People don't realize that it should be seen and you can see it and that looks good. Yep. That's why you angle your angle toes out a little bit. So, um, yeah, and this is where, this is where I want my adders to be bigger is for, for this shot as well too. Um, just kind of close that gap a little bit. Um, I, I, we talked about this na nauseam now, but yeah, my waist is blown out here. Um, like I said, my waist is going to drop six, seven inches, getting ready for the show. So yeah. that that quad sweep is going to become is going to look a lot more drastic. I'm in shape. Um, yeah, arms arms again is probably the weakest thing in this shot. Uh, mainly the biceps. You can see that uh, right arm again. That bicep just looks so flat, very very flat there. So yeah, so I, like, yeah. I'll say this though, your brachials are very well developed. I have always had comments, comments on I have big forearms. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's something that is just, you know, typically you, you, you never see big brachials and, and standard biceps, mm -hmm. usually the opposite way around. And for you though, your brachials, uh, maybe I wonder if that maybe has something to do with a lot of your, your bicep training, why you struggled with is maybe your brachials just overtake everything. I think that might be it um, because when I get a when I do get an arm pump, like a bicep pump, the sensation of a bicep pump, uh, my arm is never get the bicep never looks bigger. My arm just gets fatter, right? It okay. just gets swollen. So which is the break the break it goes underneath the bicep, uh, which pushes it up, but it doesn't contribute to the the peak on it at all. Right. So yeah, like my arms are pretty decent size. They're uh, about 18 and a half right now. It just uh they just doesn't look it because the the peaks in the biceps suck so much. Correct. Yeah, you, you got that width thickness versus the height thickness. Yeah, yeah. Which could be seen, honestly, could be seen from the um, your front relaxed. You could yep. tell that you have that thickness from the, the width. Right, right. Mm. Uh, yeah, so aside from the biceps, glutes. Glutes and adder to, like, like to be bigger. The glutes Boston definitely. Lloyd like this photo. <laughs> Boston Lloyd wouldn't like this photo. No, I'd get, yeah, soggy glutes all day long for sure. <laughs> But actually, you can see your adductors, though. If you look, that they are definitely coming up. Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, they're there. But that, that's something, like, I tell everybody, if, if your name's not Branch Warren or Ronnie Coleman, you need bigger legs. That's, that's yeah. I, dude, I will, I've never had big arms. I'll never have huge arms. But I know I can hammer the shit on my legs. So I'm always pushing for bigger legs. Yeah, um, yeah there's, there's no excuse to have small legs, man. It's, and it's something I think I've said to you, too, is, like, a lot of people with big legs, I've seen them fuck off in the gym, comes leg day, they're just genetics. Yeah. Um, and I, I mentioned to you before on the phone was, you know, you definitely aren't gifted with the greatest genetics, but the way you've always trained legs in uh, attack, that shows right there, the work ethic pays off. Yeah. Yeah, man. I, um, that's why, that's why I love the sport too. Cause it's, um, I was never good at any like recreational sport, you know, any kind of team sports, uh, I skateboarded and raced bikes when I grew up and I wasn't even that good at that either, but bodybuilding is just, what I love about the sport is it's just you're only going to get out of what you put into it at the end of the day. And um, like I said, I had, I had shit genetics coming out, coming into the sport. Um, I'm on stage over 200 pounds now. So from 130 pounds starting out to being over 200 pounds on stage is it's uh, it just goes to show you the work ethic that you put into it. Cause that would it, not come it, easily. I, I don't believe in the saying that, you know, that whole, you know, hard work beats talent when talent don't work hard talent's talent plain and simple but yeah. hard work has a different look it's a grit look yeah um, 
and it's something that shows, especially in body image, something that shows on stage. You can tell when someone dieted hard. You can tell when a man left the tank empty leaving the gym. That yep. it all shows. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so uh, back, back and legs have always been the two things that, you know, it feels like I've trained the hardest because you can, they can just take, they can take a pounding. But um, back density, I think, has definitely come up a lot over the last few years. Uh, you're going to lose my lower last in the shot from the, the fat, obviously, in my waist. But you can tell there's, there's some thickness there. Traps look thick. Uh, rhomboids, the actual last themselves look pretty good. Um, shoulders look pretty strong in this. So the only thing that's missing from this shot is width in the lats. But you'll see like in this next shot that I'm actually pretty wide when I open up, but it doesn't, it doesn't translate to the rear of a bicep at all. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. I see that a lot, on a lot of guys. The lat spread, I'm very wide on the lat spread. The yeah. double, I kind of like clam up a little bit. Uh, quick question. Down. Is this the same style suit that you wear come contest or no? Yeah, this is actually the, uh, I got that suit made for when I competed at 165. And so okay. this is just like my, my uh, update posing suit, but it's the exact same, it's the exact same cut that I wear on stage. Okay. Um, so yeah, lat, real last spread, what do you think? Actually, great pose here. Um, really only weakness I see here is on the glute, the glute tie-in and the glutes itself. Uh, like you said, back width, thickness is shown. Whenever you do a, a, a lat spread, people just think of width. Mm -hmm. You got to see thickness in it too. And you see that thickness, it's like a turtle shell almost. Yeah. Um, yeah. Triceps look real good. Triceps look very good actually on this pose. Um, really? I, I was thinking, I was going to say they looked flat. <laughs> they, they, look thick. they look thick on it. Okay. Um, this, is, this is a solid pose for you. Other than like we said, the same weaknesses from the other pose from the rear double, but other than any back portion, you're, this is a very strong back pose for you. Yeah. I like that. I like the shot a lot. I mean, just cause uh, I'm uh, structurally, I'm not the biggest guy but I have not been in a competition yet where I'm not the widest student stage for the rear lat spread, which is, I guess, my claim to fame. <laughs> <laughs> but like you and me had that same thing. It's the rear double. We might look thick or something like that, but don't have that width on that rear double, but lat spread, oh, I got you. <laughs> I can get the width. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, other than that, obviously uh, calves again, and then uh, glute and hamstring, so keep chipping away on those. Um, so uh, we keep, we keep talking, so we keep failing to mention what I need to do to bring, to bring the glutes and adductors up. Um, so yeah, quads can come up, uh, but they're not my primary focus. My primary focus is definitely the, the adductors. So to get my adductors, uh, first I had to, so I've been working, this has been a big goal of mine for like the last two years. Um, so they're coming up slowly. The biggest thing that helped them was wide deep squats. Uh, I think we've talked about a couple of times, I can no longer squat anymore, mainly because of um, just the external rotation on the shoulders. It just gets too much bicep impingement in there and it just caused me too much pain later in the week. So what I have been doing is one, I activate them with uh, addu doing adductors on the machine itself. Um, so I'll bang those out, typically three sets of 20, 25 reps, just get a lot of blood in there. And then I'll do my presses, uh, wide stance leg presses, okay. uh, zigzag lunges. That's good. So doing the typical lunge, but you step out wide. And when you step out wide, you still keep your body in the straight line. And so when you press up, you're really taxing that adductor. Um, and it's really, when it comes to adductors, it's really a lot of mind muscle connection. So when you go down, you feel it stretch. And then you kind of pull your legs inwards without really doing it. You kind of you just kind of flex them and pull them in when you press back up again. Yes. So it's a lot of it's a lot of mind muscle connection to get those things firing off rightly. But yeah. when you do, you'll be walking funny because your legs are gonna feel way too fat in the middle. Be <laughs> one of the most underrated exercises for the legs, and it, it was always seen as a female movement. But lunges is one of the best developments for legs. I mean, I would honestly put it up there with squats. I love it's lunges. The yep. development. What's unreal. Um, I actually had a client who has extremely big legs. He, he doesn't think he does, but he does have big legs. Um, he had heard us talk about, you know, doing the, doing the lunges, but like sidestepping, like, you know, the zigzags. Yep. It was like three days afterwards. He's like, dude, I still can't walk straight. <laughs> if you don't do it, they'll mess you up for the first time for sure. Definitely. Yeah, got big legs too. And it's yeah. lunges are most underrated exercise. So what do you, uh, what do you think for glutes? I, so I've been, obviously glutes are gonna get taxed from leg day. Um, 
So I've been trying to add in a, uh, a glute exercise on my shoulder day, just kind of get a second, a second go at them because there's not a direct focus every leg day. Um, so I try to directly focus on them on a shoulder day at the end of, sho the end of shoulders. I've been trying to do bridges. I don't feel like I'm doing them right. I've never been a fan of directly hitting the glute muscle per se. Yeah. Um, because it's such a control hinge movement. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always, and I've, I've actually learned this from a few physical therapists, the glutes are more controlled by the hamstring than anything. Okay. Um, so my recommendation would be maybe tossing in something like a, a lying leg curl. Um, that way you can get that big stretch in there with the hamstring and then yep. the, contraction, the contraction that'll hit into the glute. Um, Cause that will bring in the, the, that tie in right there. Um, so you kind of like the same idea where I was talking about with my front delt earlier, um, because it's the hamstring inserts up underneath the glute, it's going to push the glute out a little more. Correct. Yep. And that, because that, that tie in right there. Um, and that, that was actually something I discovered when I actually had a beyond messed up hit. Um, and I had a physical therapist really, really go into me and I was having issues with my glutes and she pointed out my, my tightness in my hamstrings. She worked on my hamstrings, never did anything to my glute, everything loosened up. So that's a, yeah, <clears throat> that's a really good point. When you're talking about uh, like soft tissue release, wherever it hurts, isn't what's typically tight. It's a muscle below or above it that's pulling on it and pulling that muscle out of alignment. So yeah, if you, if you go to someone with, you know, let's say, like I said, your glutes are really hurting you and they start working on the glute immediately, probably not the best person to go see. It's because typically not every time, but typically it's going to be something above or below that's pulling that thing out of alignment. Correct. And, and, and how we talked about the front delt and bicep earlier, it's the same thing with your leg. Your, your hamstring is your bicep. Your glute is your front delt. Yeah. It's yeah. given completely different size. And, and, but the mechanics are almost the same. They insert correctly. They, they can easily take control of each other. Yep. So it's, that, that's the way I would approach that area is with more of a stretching movement. I, I wouldn't go as far as to say like good mornings or stiff, stiff leg deadlifts just because that's more of a power movement on that day. No. Like a lot of weight curl, get that real nice stretch and contraction in with it, I think would really help in that area. Okay. Um, also for glutes, obviously the obvious things is squats and, and like your presses, but, um, with my main focus being ad adductors, I'm not hitting the glute as hard. And I guess I'm consciously kind of doing it. And even though I know I need to bring both up, I still think the adductor is a little more, uh, needs a little more attention right now than the glutes. I think you can kind of skate by a little bit with smaller glutes than you can with smaller adductors. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Cause so, your adductor, I mean, it's such yeah. a big muscle, especially on stage. Yeah. Um, so third, third of the leg in the front. Yeah. One person I would really point out to, which he's not known for his legs. He's actually put down because of his legs, but I don't think I can't see many people with better adductor development is Juan Morel. His, his adductors are monsters, man. Yeah. That's because he turns his feet out all the way too, though. Yeah. But it's like, it's the way his quads are though. They just, they don't form directly with it. Yeah. Adductors, man, are awesome. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They are. Uh, all right abdominal and thigh um <laughs> look at this i need abs obviously <laughs> um, that, that was this actually how you actually hit the pose on stage do you stay from the side or do you more turn turn into no, it this is uh this is how kenny and i switched up last year uh i used to do more traditional uh facing forward with one leg kicked forward um but i do have you know i'd have the typical wider wide waist for a white boy so um we started angling it and again obviously a lot of this a lot of this junk right here is going to disappear and it gets tight but yeah, this yeah. is how I'm hitting it. Um, the only thing I would really recommend on this would just be within the pose, maybe try to get more flexibility within your waist to turn a little bit because I love your quad there. Yep. But even when you do lose that fat, I'd love to see that twist a little bit. Okay. Just to make it disappear a little bit more. And then it would also bring that right arm more to the front. Yeah, that makes sense. Even better. Yeah, I see a little more of it. Okay. You know, that would be my only recommendation on that is maybe work on that flexibility within the waist so you can twist a little bit and see how that looks. Yeah, I mean, I probably can. I just, I'm not here, so I'll, yeah, I'll give it a shot. Yeah, um, um, but no, I, I actually like this pose a lot. It, it's, it's a variation that you, you rarely, rarely see where someone will actually do that, but it shows a lot of thickness in your quad in the front. Shows the thickness and the roundness on the front, on the rear quad. Yeah, it does. You get that quad, quad in the front. That's pretty cool. Um, and, and one thing people never pay attention to is, yeah, it's ab and thigh, but your arm, every muscle is visible. It needs to be flexed and, and shown in the proper way. And your arms in this, I like the arm arm placement a lot cool. um a lot of people don't do that they'll just hold them up and they're not even flexing they're not even paying attention to their arms yeah a lot of people hold them too close too so you don't really see anything too close yeah. they'll go real wide and they won't even flex their arms yeah yeah uh, but no this is i actually like this pose like we said though but 
off season ad and thigh. Why would I even look at the midsection? I would look at the quad. I just did it for you guys to laugh at. <laughs> side tricep. So yeah, going back, we talked about this on my side chest. Excuse me, where I said my my um my left hamstring looks better. The legs are a little, you know, slightly smaller, but the shape of it is a little more appealing. But for some reason, I'm I'm sure a lot of people are the same. I cannot I cannot get the same um, shape out of my leg. So if I were to do the side tricep on the other side, I wow. can't. The, the shape of the leg changes when I hit a side chest or a side tricep. And it's just the way that you're. You know, I'm, I'm have my weight kind of disperse over my lower body. Yeah. But uh, for some reason, this shot, this side looks way better. And you can see how much bigger this glute actually looks in this oh, side too. Yeah, way bigger. Uh, really, weaknesses on this pose. Um, excuse me, is the outer pec development into the front belt again? Yep. Um, that's kind of missing out on this or blended in together. Um, I'd like to see a touch more detail into the triceps, but then again, that could be because of off season and, and everyone's stores different. Like me, I tend to keep very lean arms in the off season. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you might just be one of the types that, you know, you just don't have that definition in the off season. Yeah. No, I don't. Um, and, and possibly, you know, I'm not saying to play around with the pose, but maybe a little bit of angles of the pose where you can twist a little bit more to show the chest. So that would possibly hide the weakness of the outer pec. Yeah, just bro, it's it's full of, it's full off season, so it's hard to. Oh, there's there's those turning. In front there's of all my concentration right now is going to keep my lower stomach in to not look like a fat ass, and it still looks like a fat ass. So. <laughs> this is this is in the off season. This is the single hardest shot to hit to get that arm behind you. Oh yeah, I, I agree. Um, but no, I, I like this pose, and actually the arm placement's pretty good to show off your rear delt on this one too. Yeah. Um, but overall, good good pose. Um. And like you said, like the difference between your right and left glute and hamstring on this is crazy. Yeah, completely different looks. I know it's weird. Yeah, um, arms. My arms from side to side are actually completely different looking too. Like if yeah. I were to hit a side chest, this arm it looks. Uh, it there's no bicep, which is strange because that's actually my better bicep. But it looks. It's like um, yeah. It's just it's really it's really awkward. It's really awkward. But that's side to side for you. I think that's it. Yeah, that's all my poses. This just goes into. Yep some post leg day stuff so um yeah you keep you keep hitting on you keep hitting on uh outer pec development we didn't talk about how to how to change that yeah um th there's a multitude of different ways um r really to me in this the outer pec is something that a lot of people have too big or not enough of you never see the right amount like a serge Newbert chest mm -hmm. um, i've always been personally a big fan like i know most people think you know hit that wide grip it's really going to hit it but you're also limiting the movement of your pecs going so wide. And then you're putting so much stress on your delts. There's too much involved in there. I've always been a firm believer of more of a shoulder, just a little bit more than shoulder width grip on a bench press or even within the dumbbells, instead of going real wide, come right to the shoulders. Yep. Not only A, do you get complete overall um, development of the chest, so you're not, you're not going to miss out on the inner pec. But now you look at it when your arm's fully extended and coming back down, you have a longer range of motion to go to. Mm -hmm. with most people yeah you're going to sacrifice weight but now you're hitting that that pec that outer pec fully from the stretch and then you're going to high contraction with it versus okay. wide you're not getting a high in contraction that so would be yeah. mostly with that so more narrow grip on both barbell and and dumbbell yeah okay. and, and, and with i know with dumbbell it's a little bit more awkward because most people go to that outer chest or the outer shoulder with the dumbbell yeah believe it or not coming in inside actually feels very comfortable to, to, for most people um okay. You know, to hit to hit the front of the delt instead of like more of the side delt. Right. Um, yeah. and, and we're not talking no huge difference of an eight inch grip difference, anything like that. Just two to three inches makes a big difference on the pecs. So, with that thought process, then do you what do you feel about uh, dips? Oh, dips are great. Um, how? But I don't know with your structure if you could with the impingements within your your rotation. Could you do dips standing and and like more straight up and leaning or no? Yeah, I actually been, I actually threw them in the last uh, three weeks. And I have no pain whatsoever with them. Oh, I'd, I'd hit the hell out of them. Um, I've never actually been a big fan of weighted dips because that tends to throw people off and they, the form's out the window. Yeah. Um, I've always been more of a fan of dips should be done at the end of your workout, body weight, and go. Um, yeah. But at the same time, you're not pumping them out. You're not a damn piston. Keep, like, and we, I think we talked about this in one of the future or past episodes is keep that, keep it in control, stretch down, come up same pace. Got it. Um, <clears throat> that, that will definitely help a lot with the pecs. I'll keep doing the dips. I'll uh, I'll try to do, I'll try to uh, 
close the um, close the gripping on on dumbbells and barbells. I'm actually giving a barbell up for the next few weeks. I've been getting a lot of uh, like I'm getting like the same pain as like a shin splint, but in my forearms right now. Wow. So I need to I need to step back from that, which kind of sucks because I had some goals there, but that's good. Um, cool, man. So yeah, that's my physique. So yeah, we'll we'll just kind of. Yeah, work on biceps, obviously. The biggest is probably my most glaring weakness. Um, I still want to work on the adductors, get those built up, and then glutes and the outer pec. Yep. And other anatomy is very solid, solid development. I mean, I actually can still, still remember. I, actually, didn't I send you a picture? We might have to pull it up next week of, um, oh, was it your first show with me? Yes. You, and you had the real tiny skinny quads. I randomly sent it to you. I was like, damn, look what I just found. Do you remember that? Oh, let me see. Did you send it to me? It, it was a while ago I sent it to you. I think it was right before we started the podcast. Well, let me check it out. I know I've got, I've got those photos on my phone from like way back. But compa compare that photo, the size of your quad to your, the size of your quad on your ab and thigh. Yep, that was it. Yeah. Yeah, look at, yeah. See, I've actually always had good quads, but there's yeah. zero adductor there too. Yeah. My legs are probably... Half as thin. Let's see. Where's the? Uh, yeah, it's pretty much the same. Yeah. Yeah. Thin. Yep. Yep. You had a good tan that show too. No, that was um, that was no, a good tan there. Yeah. No, I'm thinking the other the other one. Never mind. Cool, man. All right, brother. Well, good podcast today. Um, so I know what I need to work on, and I will be working on that. So uh, we guess we'll catch up next week or the week after then, right? Sounds good. All right, man. I'll okay. talk soon. Let me end recording before I hang up. <laughs>